A couple of weeks ago, we took a look at the Super Starter Arduino kit from Elegoo. Today, we're going to take this kit and build something fun out of it. Our own Arduino-based personal recreation of the game Simon. So, let's get started. Now, before we start assembly on this project, let's take a quick look at the electronics that will be needed to build it. So, of course, we need our breadboard, which will help us prototype out our circuits. We're going to need an Arduino to actually run the code. We'll need four of our push buttons, four LEDs. In this case, I'm using yellow, red, blue, and green. We'll need a piezo speaker to play the sound effects, and we need a resistor to limit the current to the LEDs. I'm using a 2K resistor, but you can play with different values to get brighter or darker lights. Just don't try to power the LEDs without a resistor or you'll burn them out faster than you can unplug the Arduino. That's because these LEDs will basically eat up as much current as they can and die almost instantly. On top of that, we're going to need enough jumper wire to make it all work. Okay, so let's start off by placing our components on the board. So the first thing we're going to place is the speaker. Now, the speaker is marked at the top for positive, and I'm going to try and keep all uh, positive lines to the top of the board. So we'll go ahead and push that into the breadboard with the positive pin up. Next, we're going to place our switches, and we're going to try and space them out enough that we can get LEDs around them without too much hassle. Now, when we're installing our switches like this, it means that the two pins on either side are not connected. So the pin on the left and the pin on the right are not connected until the button is pressed, but the pin on the top and the pin on the bottom are. Same thing on the right side. This pin's not connected to this pin until the button's pressed, but it is connected to the pin directly below it. Next, let's install our LEDs. Again, we're gonna try and keep the positive terminals to the top. So the LEDs have one leg that's longer than the other, and the longer one is the positive one. So we'll install those with the positive pin up. Next, we'll run power to the breadboard. So I'm going to take from the 5 volt rail, which is on the far side of the board, and I'm going to bring it into one of the terminals over here. Then I'm going to use my resistor and go from there to the positive terminal on the outside. So that means that the entire positive line on the outside of the breadboard is now run through the resistor, which I can then use to power all my LEDs. Since only one LED will be on at a time, this is a great way to have a save having to use a separate resistor for each light. We're also going to add a ground terminal. So I'll run from the ground, this time the one on the closed side of the board, and we'll go into the ground or negative terminals on the opposite side of the board. Next, let's get our LEDs wired up. So the first thing we'll do is we'll run power from our resisted positive on the top track to the positive pin on each of the LEDs. Now we're going to wire up the negative pin on the LEDs to the control pins we're going to use on the Arduino. So in this case, we're going to connect to pin two, three, four, and five. Now we can choose one pin from each of the switches and connect it to ground. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that on this side, and I'm going to choose the pin on the right side for each of them to do that with. And now we'll connect our input pins for the switches from the Arduino to the opposite side of the switch. So in this case, we're going to use pins 6, 7, 8, and 9 for, pin, for buttons 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then all that's left to do is connect our speaker. So we'll connect the negative side of our speaker to the ground, and the positive side to pin 11 on the Arduino. So let's go over what we've done. For the LEDs, five volts comes out of the board, comes into the breadboard, then through the resistor into the positive line on the side, and then to the LEDs. The negative terminals on those LEDs are now connected to pins two, three, four, and five on the Arduino. For the switches, we have ground connected to one pin, and we have pins six, seven, eight, and nine connected to the other pin on each of the switches. The speaker is connected to the Arduino between ground and pin 11 on the positive. 
Alright, so let's take some time to look at the code. So the first thing I do is set a constant for the speaker, which is 11. So this is just basically a way of storing that the speaker is on pin 11. A constant is like a variable, except for it's not designed to change. It just holds some information in memory. Next, we define length. So length is an integer, and I've set it to 400. This is the length at which a note will play when the game is playing. So if you set this to 200, it'll be half the length, but if you set it to 800, it'll be double the length. Then I declared an array of integer. So an array is a collection of like variables. In this case, I'm using it to store the four notes that'll be linked to the game, with 100 being the lowest frequency and 850 being the highest frequency. I've also created an array called game pattern, and basically this covers the entire range from uh, our low difficulty, which will be say five turns, all the way up to 20 turns, which will be the high difficulty. So this will get populated when we start the game, and it'll basically just be 20 separate integer variables, which each have a value of one, two, three, or four, which correspond to the notes that should be played. And I've made the default difficulty one. Now we move on to the setup phase. Well, our pins for our LEDs are pins two, three, four, and five. So those are gonna be output pins. They're not expecting to have any input coming on them. They're just being used to turn the LEDs on and off. On the other hand, pins six, seven, eight, and nine are being used for our buttons. So those are inputs. I also start with doing a serial.begin at 9600. This allows the Arduino to output information to the built-in serial port. So that built-in serial port can then relay information to the Arduino using the serial monitor, which is great for debugging. The serial monitor will basically uh, give, allow you to write text back to the Arduino IDE so you can see what it's doing. So if an LED is not coming on, you can have it write a command out to the serial port to say what it was supposed to do to find out whether the connection is incorrect or if the code's not being executed. Now we get to the loop. The loop is the main part of any Arduino program. This is the section of code that runs on the Arduino just over and over and over again, and this is where the guts of your program are going to be. The first thing that gets run is set pins. The set pins command goes through all of our inputs and outputs, which is pins 2 through less than 10, so 2 through 9, and digitally writes hi to them. So for our LEDs, since our positive line is connected to our resisted 5 volts, if we put 5 volts to the negative line, well, then the LED is off. If we then write it low later, that LED will turn on because it now has a ground. The Arduino also has, for its inputs, what's called a pull-up resistor. So, one of the things that you have to keep an eye for on an Arduino is that it's state-based. And it's looking through uh, for ranges from 0 to 5. And if it gets above a certain range, it'll input, or it'll say a pin's been pushed and that can basically fluctuate or vary without anything being pushed. A pull-up resistor means that it's constantly sending five volts to that pin so that it will always read high. If we then push the button and it connects ground to it, well, that will pull it low and we'll get a registered button press. So by setting all these high, we turn our LEDs off and we put our buttons into a known state. The next thing we do is generate the game. So the generate game is used to generate the pattern that's used for our gameplay. So do you remember me saying before that you can have this sort of fluctuating point on a pin where it could be anywhere from zero to five and it's really difficult to know what it is at any given time unless you set it. Well, by using random seed with an analog read on pin one, since pin one could be from zero to five and it doesn't know which one, it gives us the closest thing we can get to a random number generation. Then I built a loop that goes from zero to the current difficulty times five, because there's four difficulties and difficulty one will be five, difficulty two will be 10, difficulty three will be 15, and difficulty four will be 20 rounds. And it's gonna step through those one at a time. So I plus plus means that it basically goes through one at a time. And it sets whatever I is currently set to in our game pattern array to a random number between one and five. Now. This may seem a little confusing because we are looking at numbers one through four, but if we look up the definition for random, it says that this is the low point and this minus one is the high point. So while it says random one to five, it's actually random one to four. 
Well, with our game generated, now we move into the main menu where you can choose your difficulty level. So we use while one equals one to create a loop that can't be escaped because we just wanted to constantly check through this. And it's doing a digital recheck on pins six, seven, eight, and nine, which as you will probably remember are buttons. And we're looking to see if any of them been, have been set low. When a button's pushed, it engages ground and it pulls that pin to a low state. So if pin six is pulled down, that means button one has been pressed and our difficulty is set to one. If pin seven is down, well, then it's difficulty two, pin eight is three, and pin nine is four. So it runs off, it does a new generate game, and then we move into play game. Play game is where things get a little complicated. So we set our round count to zero because we haven't completed a round yet. Player turn is going to be set to one because when the game starts, you'll be on your first button press. And button press is going to be set to false. We'll have not pushed any buttons yet. We also have a current note variable, which will store what the current note being checked against is. A user input, which will store what button the user pushed so we can compare the two together. And whether or not they lost. The first thing we do is a little play pattern where it just plays note 1, 2, 3, and 4 quickly to indicate a game has started. And then we add a 1 second delay. So the delay is in milliseconds, so 1000 corresponds to 1 second. So here's our first loop in here, and this is basically counting the number of rounds that have been completed. And it's saying it goes from round 1 to the current difficulty times 5, and it goes up in 1 step increments. Every time we go through here, round count increases by one, player turn starts at one, and button press equals false. And of course, user input equals nothing because you haven't pushed anything yet. At the beginning of each round, play the current notes for the current round. So if you're on round one, it will play note one. If you're on round five, it'll play notes one through five. And then while the player turn is less than the current round, well, we're gonna say the current one that it's looking for is the one in the game pattern that is equal to basically this current player turn. Uh, I added a serial output so we could see what the system is expecting. And then while button press is false, go through this loop. So this is now just waiting for the user to push a button. And then much like with the main menu, if pin six gets pulled low, then the user is pushed one and the button press is set to true. If pin seven gets pulled low, well, it's set to true again, but now user input is two, pin eight is three and pin nine is four. After all that said and done, you play the note that the user pushed, and then if the current note the system is waiting for is equal to the button the user just pushed, you push the right one, the player turn gets increased by one, you've moved on to the next round, but if not, well, then it's game over for you. So as it iterates through the loops, then it gets out of that first check, button press gets set to false because you haven't pushed a button again since then. And then if you make it all the way to the end and loss is still equal to false, well, you win, Game over is true, and it, when we go to game over, well, game over just plays a little victory or loss music for you, and we end up back in the main menu. So, if all our wiring is completed successfully and the code executes successfully, we should be able to upload that to our Arduino and get it going. To do that, we'll connect our Arduino up to our USB. So now, if our wiring is done successfully and our code is properly written, we can go to Tools, Make sure that the proper port is selected. I'm not sure why port 13 is showing up three times, but they're all correct. And make sure that Arduino Uno is selected from the board menu. Then we click the arrow, which is the upload button, and wait for the code to upload. If our code is uploaded successfully, we can then choose the difficulty of the game by picking difficulty one, two, three, or four. and I'd say that's a pretty successful test. But what if we play the wrong note? And there's our fail music. So 
with just a little bit of wiring, some basic code, and a little bit of trial and error, we can build ourselves a fun little game. And it doesn't have to stop here. You can add additional switches, additional LEDs, more difficulties. You could put a little LED screen in with this and set it up so that it displays information about the game, stores statistics, all sorts of things. So what are you guys going to add to this? This is a great kicking off point, but I'd love to see what you guys do with it. If you come up with an idea, well, let me know in the comments below, or better yet, link me to the code, I'll upload it to mine, and I'll see what it does. I hope you guys have liked this little look at a beginner's tutorial project for an Arduino. If there's anything that wasn't clear, please fire me questions. I haven't done a lot of these before, and I'd like to get better at it. Alright, well, that's it for this one, but until next time, stay creative.